Hello everyone, welcome to Sergio Prado's YouTube channel. So in this video, I will show you a nice kind of feature called PStore that can be used to store and recover the kernel logs from previous boots. Um, so let's get started. All right, so I have here again the Beagle Play development board, as you can see, and um, here I have the console. Let's log into it and um, let's just confirm here. I'm going to show you. I'm running the latest kernel version as I'm right, recording this video. Um, we can also check the, the model from the device tree. As you can see, it's a big old plate on board. And uh, what I wanted to show you, it's a very nice feature, as I mentioned, called P Store, um, that really can help you debug uh, the device in situations where you don't have um, a console connected to the device. For example, um, I added a bug to the kernel to crash the kernel when you try to write to an LED. So here we go. I just try to enable the brightness from the LED and the kernel crashes. And since here I have this kind of um, direct connection to the device, right? The serial console, I can see the logs, I can see the kernel ops message, and I can debug the kernel. So that's not a problem. Now, let's say, for example, the device is a remote device. You don't have access. And let's say, for example, uh, let's wait for the device to get online. Here we go. I'm going to connect the device over SSH. So again, I'm still connected to the device, but now over SSH. Let's say this is a remote device. So I don't have a um, connection to its serial console. And then let's say the kernel crashes. What you should do? How can you debug this? I mean, um, you don't have fixed physical access to the device. The kernel crashed. That means you cannot collect its logs, right? The um, in, like uh, if you have a log daemon running in user space, this log daemon wasn't able to collect the logs from the kernel. So you don't really have much option here. Now, you can debug this with PStore, so let me show you how it works. Before that, let me just reboot my, my board. Um, so, what is PStore? Let me, let's open the kernel menu config, search for PStore. Here we go. Persistent storage support. So it's a kind of generic framework from the Linux kernel <clears throat> for persistent storage. And of course, you need drivers using this framework to provide some features to the users. And there is one driver, this one, that is the interesting one for us right now, log panic ops to a run buffer. Let's see the help. So. The help says, this enables panic and ops messages to be logged to a circular buffer in run where it can be read back at some point later. This is very interesting because we can use this to save the logs from the kernel, in our case, from the kernel crash, the kernel ops message, to a buffer that we can check later. Um, since it stores the, the logs in run and then run is volatile, that means if you power the board off, you're going to lose those logs. But if you do a soft reset, then you can recover those logs in the next boot. And that's very nice. So that means you can save kernel logs, including kernel ops and panic messages, to a buffer in run that you can recover in the next boot that can solve our problem here. Let's have a quick look at the documentation. 
then we're going to enable this feature and see how it works. So this is the documentation of this feature. And so here it talks about the feature. It, it is called Remotes. Um, and um, it makes it possible to save kernel ops and pen messages to run. That's the main purpose. That means you need to configure a specific um, address in run dedicated for this feature. So you're going to allocate part of the run to store those logs. And of course, the kernel will not use that part of the run. It's going to be dedicated and allocated for this driver. So as soon as you enable this, you have to configure the location in RAN that you want to, to store those logs. To configure this, I mean, you might want to go over later to the documentation, but I, I just want to show you a few parts of it. You can configure this driver by passing some kernel, some parameters to the kernel. So for example, here you can say, I want to use this address and I want so you can reserve the driver part of the memory. Um, I, I prefer to use a device tree. So the same thing can be done in a device tree. So it is common for device trees to define this node called reserved memory, where you have inside of it several different sub nodes reserved, reserving memory for different purposes. And for us here, it's the RAM ops what matters. So inside this reserved memory node, we can define another node to reserve memory for the RAM ops driver. And here we can say the beginning of the memory address where we want to use for the RAM ops driver and the size. So this is one meg bytes of RAM starting from this address, this example. And we can also define the size of the records, like every time it starts something, it's going to start a record. That means it, can, it is able to start logs from different boots, or it can start logs from different crashes. So you can have several different logs, not just one. That is also nice. All right, let's enable it and see how it works. So I'm going to open the menu config again. I'm going to search for PStore. And uh, I'm going to enable it. Log panic ops to a run buffer. There is another option that I want to enable that will make debugging easier. Because Think about what will happen here. So I'm, I am remotely connected to a device, and then I will, will run a command that will crash the kernel. And when the kernel crashes, it crashes. But I want the device to reboot itself so I can access the log of the crash from the previous boot. Um, so there is one option that we can enable we can enable here that is panic timeout. That is a nice option. This is a nice option because you can say to the kernel if you panic after x seconds you should reboot. So here I'm going to just use one. So that means the kernel will reboot when panicking after 1 second. And that's what I want, because if the kernel uh, panics, I want it to reboot to collect the logs in the next boot. Let's compile the kernel. It might take a little bit of time, this compilation. So let's wait for it. Uh, while the kernel compiles, a quick explanation about my infrastructure here. And I really like to work that way, like I'm booting everything from 
the network. So this is the, the, the console from Big Play. When I boot in, I'm gonna load the kernel and the device tree from the network using the TFTP protocol. And after that, I'm gonna mount the root file system over network using NFS. So that means I have everything on my machine, like I have the kernel and the device tree in this directory. I have also other kernels and device trees here from other projects and experimentations. And I have my root file system here, um, NFS, Big O, Play. So this is my root file system that I built with build roots. This is a very nice infrastructure because um, you have the possibility to work with the files on your machine, right? You don't have to flash write stuff to a storage device in the development board. All right, so the kernel is built. As you can see here, I already copied the kernel to the TFTP directory. So now it's just a matter of uh, rebooting the board, right, with this uh, new kernel. Let's see here in the code, so the boot process. But uh, we're going to do the tests in the SSH connection. All right, so now let's connect to SSH. So again, let's pretend this is a remote device, right? We don't have access to it, so we cannot collect the kernel logs when it crashes. Um, the first thing that we can check is the if the RAM ops driver was able to initial to be initialized and here we can see yes it was able so here we can see the reserved memory right um, logs and then the RAM ops driver successfully re registered in the p star infrastructure and then the memory that it is using I didn't show you right the where this is configured. I should. So as I mentioned, if you want to use P Store, you have to enable the feature, but also configure the location in run that you, you want to store the logs. And this is already configured in the Big O Play development board. So this is the Big O Play device tree. I'm gonna open it and here as you can see in the beginning of the device tree we have the reserved memory session and the RAM ops node there so it was already configured I didn't have to do this configuration so this is the compatible string to match the driver and this is the configuration, right? It's going to use this address in RAM and this size, but I think it's one megabyte of RAM and the size of the record. All right, so now we can test this feature. Let's, uh, let's crash, right? So again, I am in the SSH connection, so... I'm going to lose the SSH connection, of course, it just hang it here because the kernel crashed. But since we enabled that uh, reboot on panic feature, right, the kernel in, uh, rebooted, as we can see here in the console, right, it's already, already rebooted. Um, I, I can show you here in the console what happens. This is the, no, this is the latest, the, the new boot. Let's wait here, here we go. So I was in SSH, right? I run that command and then we get a kernel panic here, as you can see, and then rebooting in one second. 
and then they can reboot it and then now we can see here the logs from the bootloader so what happened was i connected over ssh i ran a command that crashed the kernel the kernel automatically reboot without my interaction and then now i can connect it again and now since i have pstor enabled and the rum ops driver enabled i can collect the logs from the previous crash how does that work how can i read that region of memory with the logs there is a virtual file system for that that i can mount it is called pstor so i i just have to mount this pstor file system somewhere the default location is sysfs pstor i mount it now i can check the content of this uh, and i can see there the logs so let's check what we have here we go the crash from the linux kernel very nice so in summary with this feature you can keep in memory logs from the from previous boots of the linux kernel and this is very nice especially for debugging protocols right there are more things that we you can do with this uh, pstar infrastructure i just want to show you so you can the way i configure it it will only save the crashes uh, the the kernel ops and panic messages but if you want you can enable the complete kernel logs so save everything all the kernel logs so every time you reboot the system you will be able to access previous kernel logs with this infrastructure you can also enable this option log user space messages and then you're gonna have a device in slash dev that you can write to from user space so you can have user space messages in this buffer that is also nice the only thing about this um, feature is that the logs are stored in run that means if you turn the device off then you're gonna lose everything now if you want something that is really persistent then you can use this other driver that is called it pstore blk log pen op ops to a block device so you can really have persistent logging for kernel ops and panic messages by using this driver and then you can enable and configure part of your storage device let's say an emmc device to store persistent messages ops and panic messages from the linux kernel all right so i hope this video was useful for you Pistor is a very nice and uh, simple to use feature right so if you enjoyed this video don't forget to click in the like button and uh, subscribe to the channel share with your friends um hope you enjoy it looking forward to another videos about the linux kernel i'm playing be planning to do videos about yocto maybe aosp um, device driver development device tree so if you have any ideas feel free to leave comments in the in the description of the video again i hope you enjoy it and uh, until next time bye bye